The Apple Vision Pro is here, and like most Apple products, there is a lot of controversy right now regarding the thing that I'm wearing on my head right now. And I watched a lot of the other reviews, and I feel like there's a lot of things that they didn't tell you about this headset that I want to cover in this video, and that all starts with the fit of this headset. Now, I know a lot of reviews that I personally watched mentioned how uncomfortable this headset was and how heavy it was on your head, especially with the default strap that I'm wearing right now. Now, what I can say about this headset is that I'm kind of not feeling that. I feel like the fit, uh, at least with this default band, I haven't even tried the secondary band yet that has the top strap that goes over here. That I think that's like the dual knit band. I'm using the solo loop band, and it has been extremely comfortable for me so far. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I have a strong neck or something like that, but I have been using this thing uh, in, for two hours until the battery dies out, and I have not really faced any discomfort uh, wearing this. I feel like I could wear it for hours and hours and hours on end. And even one time when I was using it plugged into the wall, I was using it for multiple hours and I was just working uh, throughout that whole time with no discomfort. I know technically the headset does weigh more than others. You know, Apple use uh, premium metal materials and glass rather than something like plastic, which does increase the weight. But I don't, I don't know if it's just how it sits on my head, but I personally find it very comfortable. Obviously your mileage is going to vary. Not everyone, uh, finds the same things comfortable and you know everyone has different specifications and even the fit is so important you know apple really places an emphasis on getting a custom fit with this headset and maybe if your fit's wrong it could probably lead to some significant discomfort uh but yeah we have been discovering a lot about this headset so far that goes beyond just the fit and one of my favorite things about this uh, headset is the persona because it is really really interesting so basically apple is taking a full 3d scan of your face and basically making like a cgi model of you to use when you're in facetime calls now one of the things about these personas that I had a question about uh, when I first started using this product was, do I have to be me? You know, I, I, no other review answered this. Can you scan someone else's face and then become that persona? Well, I actually invited my friend Anthony over to try and see if I can become his persona, and here's how it went. I'd like to take his, his face off. All right, so one of the things I was curious about Vision Pro is can we, like, set someone else up as my persona. Like, did Apple think about this? Can I impersonate someone? So I brought Anthony here. I'm gonna try and impersonate him. So yeah. what you need to do for me is hold your hands up like this. Like so you can't, yeah. Do I need to pinch the air or anything? Yeah, yeah. No, no, just stay, stay like that. Okay. Perfect. Hold him up like this, like with that finger out. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna guide you. Flip him over like this way. Your face within the frame. Slowly turn your head to the right. Next, let's capture your facial expressions. Smile with your mouth closed. <laughs> then make a big smile with your teeth showing. Now I'm gonna get to be eyes. him. It's what? Raise your eyebrows. Oh. Close your eyes for a moment. Capture complete. Put Vision Pro back right. to continue. Moment of reality. Can I actually be someone else in Vision Pro? This is gonna this is gonna break the internet, guys. I'm gonna you can be whoever you want now. You just gotta find them and get them to willingly scan. I'm gonna go up to like celebrities. I'm gonna find like uh uh Timothy Chalamet and be like, hey, can you do a Vision Pro scan for me? It's creating it. I'm gonna be Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Whoa, I'm Anthony. That's I'm so you. weird. Wait, I'm on. you. <laughs> That's, I, I am you. That is. I am you. Oh my God. I'm you. you. Look at you. you. I'm, I'm you. you. I, don't, I don't see the resemblance. So that's really interesting. You can actually become someone else's persona if you get the permission to scan their face like I did. And that's really creepy. I did like a FaceTime call with people uh, using Anthony's face and they were all weirded out because it looked like Anthony, but all of the facial expressions were mine because you know, I, you know, we move our faces in different ways and you kind of pick up on that. So you kind of get like this weird combo of things, but it's really interesting. I'm, I'm almost tempted to see if I can run into like a celebrity. Like, can I run into like Harrison Ford and be like, hey, can I do a 3D scan of your face real 
real quick with my uh, Apple Vision Pro so I could be uh, your persona when I'm talking to people. So it's just an interesting thing. I haven't seen any other reviewer talk about scanning someone else as their persona. So this is something I discovered on my own and yeah, you can totally do it. Then there's pass-through mode. Now I feel like Apple wasn't necessarily lying about pass-through mode, but they were definitely showing it in its best light. And I mean that literally, because what we have here is a pretty difficult lighting environment. I did this on purpose, right? We have a lot of bright spots and we have a lot of dark spots. So as I look towards the dark spots, you can notice, you can see some of the noise, right? And that's when pass-through kind of starts to break the illusion of, hey, I'm basically looking through a camera, but let me walk around a bit and let me look at some of these lighter areas and look at that. A lot of the noise in this video recording start to disappear. Yes, I am recording this on Vision Pro. So as I walk to these brighter areas, you can see my skin tone looks really good. The color of my shirt looks really good. And at least from my point of view from the Vision Pro, I'm not seeing that much noise. The best way I can try and explain this is basically take your iPhone out, uh, start recording a video with it and record it in a really bright environment and look how good the footage looks. There's very little noise, but then take it to a dark environment and then you'll start to notice a lot of noise and you'll see the footage start to fall apart. That's kind of like a very similar experience to how Vision Pro is, just basically strapped to your face. Something that Apple wasn't lying about was the latency in this device. It is very low. So this is probably my favorite part of pass through is that it looks like normal vision, at least in terms of latency. So if I, you know, go to pick up this book, I can pick it up. I can flip through the pages. Everything feels one-to-one -one with my normal vision. I don't notice any lag or anything like that. So I can flip this book up in the air, catch it like that, no problem. You could do a lot of cool things in the Vision Pro. And the pass-through is good enough that you could play games with it too, right? So playing pool right here. I'm not the best at pool. Another thing you need to know about Vision Pro is that it's basically retina already. And this was something I was not prepared for. So as soon as I started loading up these apps, even though Apple said it was 4K per eye, I was expecting something like very early iPhone days or the first generation iPad where you would be able to see the pixels. Maybe it would have been sharper than other displays, but I was fully expecting to see pixels. And at the first generation product, you basically can't. It feels retina. I cannot see individual pixels on the text and all the colors look super vibrant because that OLED display and the text looks super sharp, which is really important to the experience of using Apple Vision Pro. If you've ever used any other VR headset like this, I am telling you the fidelity in Apple Vision Pro is just next level. Everything on this looks really great. So let's go into Safari and open that up and I can read all this text. I could just scroll and read and it looks like a browser window literally just floating in front of me. And I am amazed by that. Now, another cool thing with Apple Vision Pro that I feel like a lot of people haven't talked about either is that even though we can use these pinch gestures, which I'm sure you're very familiar with by now from watching all the videos, there's actually another way to control these apps. So look at this. I'm gonna bring Safari close to me and I'm almost gonna bring it to me like an iPad. I'm even gonna pretend to hold it like an iPad, but look what happens. I can actually take my finger and I could just scroll. It's like using a touch screen. You don't necessarily have to use the pinch and you know swipe gestures like this. You can actually just go in and touch. And it basically works like a touch screen floating in front of you. So you can just grab here, you can highlight things, you can expand the highlight, and then you can go in, you can tap on things just like you could on a touch screen. So this is something I haven't seen a lot of people talk about, and it's really interesting. As I'm starting to learn how to use Apple Vision Pro, I'm starting to feel like I'm using apps in different ways. So some of the apps, I'll pinch back, I'll scroll through like this, but some of them I like to bring up close and I like to interact with them almost like I'm using a giant size iPad right in front of me. Now, one of the great things about doing videos on Vision Pro is that I can have my notes all in front of me while well, you technically can't see them. Well, now you can see them because you're looking at this via the uh, screen recording, but yeah, I really like that. But something I really haven't seen people talk about either is kind of how multi-touch works in Vision Pro and not necessarily that you're actually touching things like we could before, but look at this. So I'm gonna pinch this, I'm gonna look at this app now and I'm gonna pinch this too. And you can actually move both apps. Look at this, I'm like crisscrossing. So you can actually like walk around too, which is something I haven't seen people talk about uh, really that well in the reviews is how mobile Vision Pro is. Look at these windows. You can just move around with them and you can place them. That's another great thing too, right? Look at this. I'm gonna place my notes field here. I'm gonna place Safari here. I'm gonna expand this into a bigger view and we're just gonna keep those there, right? And I can walk around the room. I can look down, I can look up, I can look away. If I come back 
those apps stay anchored in place. And that is awesome. Uh, this does not get enough credit for how good this works. And you can place a ton of apps everywhere. I don't feel like there's a limitation right now to the number of apps you can have open at once. You can see I kind of made a little workspace over here and I got floating windows all in different spaces. And as I move around the room, they just stay there anchored until I want to move them. And you can even look up on the ceiling and you can plant a photo there. This is really cool stuff, I feel like, because it really is interesting how Apple pitched this as a spatial computer. And as I use it more, that's what I'm finding it is, right? It, you can move these things around in a 3D environment. Like the best way I can show this, I guess, or maybe it doesn't come across well on screen recording is that I could take this and move it closer to me and move it back. It is completely moving in a 3D space. And look at the shadow on the table. It's all happening like that. It makes these floating windows feel like they're actually in the room with you. And that is really cool. Now, one of the big news stories when Vision Pro launched was that there were some apps that weren't going to be available on the platform, specifically two very popular apps, Netflix and YouTube. You're watching this on YouTube right now, so that's kind of a bummer, right? You want to watch YouTube on the Vision Pro, but you know, we have the World Wide Web, so that's not too much of a problem, right? You can go into Safari and you can just load up, you know, the YouTube web page. So even though there is no native YouTube app on uh, the Vision Pro, obviously you can just go to Safari and use YouTube. So we could see Luke Miani posted his Vision Pro video. We can click on that and we could see Luke Miani right here. We can expand the view and it does support 4K resolution on YouTube. So it looks good too. So you can kind of shrink it down like this and you can expand it. And you could basically watch a giant screen of your favorite YouTuber on Vision Pro, even without the app. Connecting a Mac display is something a lot of you wanted to see in my last video. So here you can see I have the Apple Vision Pro on, obviously, and you can see there's a little connect button right over here. So if I pinch that, this is gonna connect to the Mac display and it's actually gonna pop up on my Vision Pro. So you can see here I have a really big Mac display to work with. It is much bigger than my laptop. It is much bigger than even my studio display. You can see if I push it out really far, and if I go to the corner and I drag it out, I, I don't even know what size this would be. I would guess this is over 100 inches for a Mac display. It's like being in a movie theater and just staring at your Mac screen, which is really, really cool. So you can see I can go over here and I can actually use my trackpad and keyboard and I can click on Final Cut Pro. And this is probably the biggest screen that I've ever used Final Cut Pro on. It's actually a little jarring and it works really, really well. Um, now there's been a common misconception with this feature. When Apple demoed this, a lot of people apparently were expecting to see multiple Mac displays being popped up so you can have multiple monitors, but it only works with a single window with the Mac. But with that being said, I think people are kind of discounting this already because even though this is a great feature and you can fully access your Mac desktop on Vision Pro, it doesn't mean you can't pop in other Vision apps while you're using this. So if you're using Final Cut and you want to pop in Safari, well, you can do that and you can place another window there. If you want to go in, you know, listen to a podcast on a different uh, window, you can go over to compatible apps. You can pop up your podcast, right? And you can place that there. You can place your Mac window there and you can just keep placing more windows too, right? If you want to open up books for some reason and read a book while you're doing all this all the way up here, you can pop that up. You can do that and you still have access to your Mac screen over here. And you can also access all of those apps on this Mac screen as well. So even though you're not necessarily getting two Mac monitors side by side, which would be nice with a program like Final Cut Pro, I feel like the multitasking thing with Vision Pro is still here because you do get access to all of your Vision Pro apps as well as this single Mac display. Another thing I was interested in was what happens when the Vision Pro battery runs out? Uh, obviously you are seeing things through a camera. So if the battery goes dead, everything is suddenly gonna darken out and you're not gonna be able to see anything, right? But I actually ran the Vision Pro battery down to 0% the other day and you do get met with a warning before the Vision Pro turns off. It actually pops up this little warning telling you that the Vision Pro is about to turn off in 30 seconds and to take your headset off. So if you're wondering what happens when your battery suddenly dies, well, you do get a warning to take the headset off, which is really good because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see anything. And yes, you do get 
battery warnings in Vision Pro 2. So once you hit that 20% or 10% mark, you do get a little notification telling you that your battery is running low. Another experience I noticed in Vision Pro that I haven't seen too many people talk about is how you lose track of time when using this device. Now, this might be because it's a new device and I'm just having a lot of fun using it and time seems to be flying by, but look at this interface. Do you notice anything? Well, I gave you a second. If you didn't figure it out, there's no easily viewable clock on this user interface. Yeah, the, look, you don't see the time anywhere. The way you have to see time is by glancing up, pinching to go to control center, and there you can see the time and the date and battery life. Those are all kind of hidden within the user interface. So if you're just using Vision Pro normally, you kind of don't see the time pop up. And I've kind of found myself lost in that. I've, I've been losing track of time. I don't realize what time of day it is. And when I take the Vision Pro off and I check my phone, I'm like, wow, time really uh, went quickly when using this device. And finally, we've also seen a lot of demos of people just using the Vision Pro inside, sitting around, and that's it. No one's really taken this out into the real world and kind of answered the question, can you actually just use this thing walking around? And honestly, you can. The latency again, like we discussed before, is super low. So as I'm looking around, I'm, I'm just seeing the world and walking around. So it feels pretty good. I don't feel like anything's really amiss here. And then the cool part is I can see the world and well, I can start interacting with this as well. So I can place these browser windows right over here. Why well, be marred by this uh, view when you can look at nine to five Mac instead? Or, you know, if you wanna bring up uh, some good old podcasts, why not do that too? So yes, you can actually use the Vision Pro outside. So I hope this actually gave you a glimpse on maybe some of the features that weren't exactly highlighted with the Vision Pro, or maybe just some misconceptions about the Vision Pro itself. Again, I've only been using this device for a day, but I gotta say, it has been extremely fun so far and really eye-opening on what it's like to use this new spatial computing platform. I, I said it before in yesterday's video and I'll say it again. This is a new era of computing. It is a new frontier. There are so many unknowns right now with this device. But what I can say is my first impressions are really strong. And I wasn't necessarily expecting that for a device that's $3,500. I think the biggest hurdle for this device still, as I'm wearing it outside and people can see me is It's a little embarrassing. I'm not used to wearing it outside, but who knows if this will actually catch on and we'll just see people walking around in our daily lives with the Apple Vision Pro.